is when the wasps drowned. That was the summer Therese stepped in the wasp's nest and brought an end to our barefoot wanderings. When the sun shone every day and everybody commented upon it, old ladies on park benches fanning themselves with well-thumbed issues of woman's own would sigh, oh, isn't it hot? And I, hungry for conversation, would sit tall on the wooden seat and smile as I agreed, eyes darting to see if they might say anything more. The heat was all anyone ever seemed to speak of, and I knew that when the weather changed, we'd still be talking of the same thing, and then we'd be blown at our hands and complaining of the cold. The chemists sold out for after sun that summer, and flower beds dried up, and people had to queue to get into the swimming pool. With towels hung over their arms, or squashed into carrier bags, we'd see them waiting on the wall outside, listening to the shouts echoing on the water within, envious of those who emerged coolly, with hair slicked damp, and eyes pink and purpurian, carrying bags of crisps from the vending machine. It was the first time the garden walls seemed confining, when finally I was tall enough to peer over their mossy tops and look across the line of gardens and see sheets dried out in the heat, listless in the still air, and hear the tinny music of distant transistor radios and the ache of cars moving slowly in the hot sun, their windows wide, as if that might change anything. That was the summer they dug up Mr. Mordecai's garden. <coughs> we heard her screams from inside. I was standing at the sink, barefoot in the lino, washing up the breakfast dishes, soaking them lazily as I watched the light play on the bubbles. Tyler was curled under the kitchen table, pushing a toy truck back and forth, smiling at the rattle of its metal wheels. Her screaming, the way it broke the day, so shocked me that I dropped a glass which smashed on the tap and fell into the dishwater below. She was running in circles round the gardens, shrieking, a halo of angry wasps blurring her shape, her pigtails dancing. For the first few moments, I just stood, mouth agape, watching her through the grime of the kitchen window, not wanting to go anywhere near to raise all those wasps. As I ran to the back door, Tyler rose and toddled after me. I remember him laughing as I turned the hose on her. We thought it was a joke. Dripping with water, her sundress clinging to a polka dot of red welts, Therese continued to scream into the afternoon. Around her on the grass, wasps lay dark on their backs, legs kicking, wings too sodden to fly. Mum was out at work all day, leaving us to our own vices. Sometimes I'd take them out, Therese picking at her scabs, Tyler strapped in the buggy. We'd walk down to the park, and I'd sit by the swings and watch the boys. They'd stand in a huddle by the public loose, puffing on cigarettes. Other days, we'd just lie out, lie in the garden, and absorb the heat. I'd fashioned a bikini from a pair of pink knickers, and an old vest which I'd cropped just below my nipples. I had a pair of green plastic sunglasses I'd bought at the corner shop, and the yellow flip-flops Mum now insisted we wear. I'd Sunday, while Therese scoured the grass for wasp corpses. When she found one, she'd place it on a paving slab, and using a stone, pound its body to dust. Tyler would squat sagely beside her. I'd watch them idly, lift an arm perhaps to hunt out another dead wasp lodged between the blades of grass. <laughs> It was maybe early August when she and Tyler started to dig under the garden wall. Sitting in its shadow, they scratched away with sticks, collecting the dry earth in a plastic bucket. Help us, Eveline, they'd say. We're digging to Australia. But I'd just roll my eyes and turn the page of my magazines. The task would occupy them for a while, and then they'd come and roll next to me, Tyler flat out on his stomach snuffling as the grass tickled his nostrils, to raise plaiting together thin strands of my hair. So we'd lie and wait for Mum to come home, her uniform sweaty round the edges. Then she'd sit, her legs up on one of the kitchen chairs, complaining how her feet were swollen, 
watching as we prepared the fish fingers and chicken nuggets. In that heat, everything seemed an effort. There was a day I remember, I was lying on my side, eyes closed. Therese finished her digging and was flopped next to me. One plump arm was curled in a damp embrace around my knee. She was breathing hotly against my, my hip. I opened my eyes in a slow squint against the sun. Teresa's other arm was flung out above her head. It was the glint that caught my eye. I only saw it as she jerked her hands at the butt of the fly. Wedged off her thumb was a thin gold ring studded with small diamonds. There was dirt lodged between the stones, but still they caught the sunlight and glint. At first I didn't react. I just lay there, watching. <coughs> Therese, I said finally, where'd you get that ring? Found it, she sighed. I heaved myself up by one elbow and took my hand in mine to look more closely at the small piece of jewellery. 